Castlevania, one of the most successful video game franchises ever made since its first release on September 26, 1986, has been made into an animated series on Netflix. At first I was skeptical on how well it's going to be given the bad track record a video game to TV movie adaptation has been like, such as the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon series, Resident Evil and Super Mario Bros. live action movies first come to mind. So naturally, I was a bit worried thinking, oh great, another fucking video game series that's going to get butchered while being adapted. Well, the Castlevania animated series turned out, for me at least, to be pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's good nevertheless. The Castlevania animated series is basically a gory anime retelling of Castlevania III Dracula's Curse for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Here we follow Trevor Belmont, a quote-unquote out-of-practice demon killer who gets wrapped up with Dracula's act of vengeance against humanity. It was written by Warren Ellis, directed by Sam Dietz, and features the voices of Richard Armitage, James Callis, Graham McTavish, Alejandra Reynoso, Tony Amendola, Matt Freer, and Emily Swallow, who did a good job voicing the series. As I said, the voice acting for the series was pretty good, and there's really not a whole lot to say about the animation other than it's heavily influenced by Japanese anime and the work Ayami Kojima did for Castlevania Symphony of the Night. As well as being gory as fuck. The show does a good job in handling most of the game material, unlike other adaptations of video games that shit all over it. What do I mean by most of the game material, you ask? Well, we'll get to that in a bit. But as much as I enjoyed the Castlevania video game series, there was very little story in the earlier games, other than the intro at the title screen. Here's the intro of the original Castlevania 3 game. That's all the story we get in the game, other than the ending is based on who's your companion at the time when you finish it, if any. In very small dialogue exchanges between Alucard, Sypha, or Grant, they only really pertain to whether or not you want to recruit them. The show answers the lack of story from the game by adding more death to the world, such as religious fanatics controlling villagers through fear under false pretenses. The change to rationale and perception from people when Dracula's army begins to spread throughout Wallachia, for example. And more personality and depth to characters such as Trevor when there is no personality from his character in the game, as well as making Dracula more sympathetic than we've previously seen in earlier games. You don't see a lot of death from Dracula in the games back then until Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and even then, you don't really know how he met his wife Lisa, let alone in order to develop feelings for her. All we knew back then in Symphony of the Night was that Dracula and Lisa were a couple, 
had Alucard, and Lisa dies. And that's going off of a dream sequence from Alucard later on in the game. Hell, Lisa wasn't even mentioned in the original games back then until Symphony of the Night. However, I do like that they didn't spend too much time telling us how Dracula and Lisa met. I mean, it would have been very boring if all we got in Season 1 was the backstory of Dracula and his relationship with Lisa. Now, when I said before that they did a good job in handling most of the game material, they handled the general plot of the story well, as well as the characters and the chemistry between them. But my disappointment comes from the pacing as well as nitpick shit here and there, such as the lack of original Castlevania music and the fucking omission of Grant Dynasty. I mean, seriously? Where the fuck is Grant? He was in the original game and Canically was the man that helped rebuild Wallachia after Dracula's defeat. But according to Warren Ellis, that due to the limited time, he opted to drop Grant Dynasty because besides the stupid name, he felt the pirate was misplaced in the setting and that the limited runtime would not allow him to develop the character fully. If you're going to do adaptations based on source material on established video game franchises like Castlevania or Resident Evil or such, then do it justice, regardless of personal feelings towards certain characters or make radical deviations of certain characters or aspects from the source material. Take the Super Mario Bros. live action movie for example. The world is dark and dingy, whereas the video game is bright and colorful. Or the Goombas and Koopas in a live action movie are giant humanoids with really tiny heads. WHAT THE FUCK?! Resident Evil is another example, where the main character in the films is a woman with superpowers. I mean, come on. Bitch never appeared in any of the games whatsoever. To me, I felt that the humor, for the most part, was kind of forced and didn't really flow well. One scene that comes to mind is the bar scene where two relatives are talking about goat fucking and hitting the villager that did the deed with a shovel, which dragged on and on and on. I mean, I didn't know there could be that much to talk about. I mean, seriously, you would think these guys would have more important things to talk about, such as, you know, Dracula and his army taking over the world, for example. Although the funniest part in that scene was Trevor, after being repeatedly kicked in the nuts by the villagers, asking them politely to leave his testicles alone. Would you please leave my testicles alone? Ugh. I mean, really. How polite do you really have to be when getting kicked in the nuts against your will? The pacing was also an issue to me. There are scenes where you're hooked and focused on, then the next scene right after that just drag on for way too long, and that hurts the flow of the episodes at times, such as the bar scene, meeting with the Seekers, and several church scenes where the bishop just rambles on and on that stretch for far too long, and I was losing interest a bit because of it. As I said before, the show is a retelling of the video game. It starts off in Wallachia in 1455. A woman named Lisa, who wishes to be a doctor, seeks out Dracula, who has advanced scientific knowledge. Intrigued by her courage and ambition, Dracula agrees to teach her, while she in turn offers to help him reconnect with humanity by telling him to live like a normal man and travel the world as people do. The two eventually fall in love and marry. Then 20 years later, in 1475, in the town of Targovisti, Lisa is burned at the stake as a witch after a bishop discovers scientific equipment in her home and accuses her of witchcraft. Dracula returns only to be devastated and furious upon learning of his wife's death by an elderly woman whom Lisa has helped. He then teleports to Targovisti and declares that the people have one year to make their peace with their god, 
after which every human in Wallachia will die by his hand. Afterwards, his son Alucard tells him to instead go after the man responsible instead of all of humanity, but Dracula refuses to listen and attacks him. One year later, the Archbishop hosts an anniversary celebration on the day of Lisa's death until Dracula emerges once more. As promised, Dracula kills the Archbishop, then orders his demon army to kill everyone in Wallachia. As the army spreads across the land, the people place the blame on the kingdom's noble families, including the Belmonts. Following a brawl at a pub, Trevor Belmont seeks food and respite in the city of Gresset, which has been besieged by Dracula's forces every night. As he passes through town, he learns that the townspeople blame a group of people known as the Speakers for Dracula's assault. He saves their elder from a pair of corrupt priests, who brings him back to his home to meet his fellow Speakers. Trevor insists that they leave the city for their own safety, but the elder refuses as his grandchild has gone missing after venturing into the catacombs below the city in search of the sleeping soldier, a legendary hero who they believe can defeat Dracula. Begrudgingly, Trevor agrees to retrieve the missing grandchild. Upon exploring the catacombs, Trevor realizes that they have been unusually constructed and contain devices matching old family descriptions of devices within Dracula's castle. Finding a stone statue in the visage of a speaker, Trevor is attacked by a giant cyclops. He defeats the creature, releasing its curse, and rescues the elder's grandchild, Sypha Belnantes. After returning Sypha to her grandfather, Trevor is summoned to the church by the local bishop, revealed to be the same bishop who ordered Lisa's execution. The bishop orders Trevor to leave Gresset before sundown, as they plan to leave a mob to kill the speakers, offering to spare Trevor and restore his family name in exchange. With the speakers refusing to retreat, Trevor has them hidden in the Cyclops' chamber and takes on the priests leading the mob before escaping into the city. Night falls as Dracula's army descends upon Gresset, killing the bishop. As Trevor continues his escape, Sypha appears to aid him, revealing herself as a powerful magic user. Trevor exposes the clergy's actions as the true reason for Dracula's invasion, and assists the people in mounting a defense against the demons. During the battle, however, the floor crumbles beneath Trevor and Sypha, and they fall deep into the submerged catacombs of the city. Making their way in deeper, they find a sleeping soldier, revealed to be Alucard who has spent a year healing from his last fight with Dracula. Trevor and Alucard engage in battle, but after seeing his and Sypha's resolve, Alucard relents and offers his aid, and the three prepare to challenge Dracula and end the conflict for good. Whew, and that's season one. I personally enjoyed it despite its flaws, and overall see it as a breath of fresh air in terms of video game adaptation and hopefully different games from Castlevania both well-known and lesser-known can be adapted into the series. I personally would love to see Simon Belmont and his story being told in a future installment for the series. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a like and post your thoughts about Castlevania Season 1 down below, and I will see you next time.